Toronto, how are you? Well, I'm really excited to be here with you. And let me tell you why, because I'm told that you are the best of the good, you are the brightest of the bright, you are the future, you are important. Is that true? Well, then say it with me. We are the best. We are the brightest. We are the future. We are important. And you are important to me, and let me tell you why. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the work that I'm doing and what I think you might be able to do to help us in our work. Right now, I'm involved with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. And we are involved in doing workshops and hearings across this country with the members of the public and with survivors to talk about residential schools and the impact that they're having on Canada's life. For 150 years, the government of this country systematically and forcibly removed Aboriginal children from their families and took them away in buses, in boats, in trucks, against their will, and put them into institutions they called residential schools. And in those schools, they attempted to indoctrinate them into a different culture, to force them to speak a different language. They kept them separate from their families, separate from their brothers and sisters, even in the same school, and told them that they were inferior, that they were savages, that they had to give up their life back in their community, that they had to give up their culture, and they had to become different people. It's hard to believe that they did that in this beautiful country that we believe in so strongly, because this country is so very important to all of us, and I know that you believe that too. But the one thing that they tried to do the most was they tried to take away the identity of the children. They tried to kill the Indian in the child. And they did that forcibly. Sometimes they were, fun they were punished and they were abused within the schools. Children were abused physically. Children were abused sexually. And a lot of damage was done to them. But even the ones who were not abused in that way were often treated horribly because they felt lonely, they felt isolated, they had lost contact with their family, they weren't allowed to go home, and as a result, their relationships with their families suffered, and their individual sense of who they were also suffered. And when they became parents, and they tried to raise children, they had a hard time doing it. And one of the things that we're trying to do with our commission is we're trying to get Canada to understand that this has caused long-term damage. But I also want you to understand that it wasn't just Aboriginal children who were affected by this. Your parents were too, and even you to a certain extent, because the public schools of this country have also not been teaching about Aboriginal people properly. And what we need you to do... What we need you to do is to make a commitment to make a commitment to the Aboriginal people who have survived residential schools that you will help to make things better. And how can you help? What is it that you can do? Well, when you have that day of silence, when you have that moment of silence, I want you to think of those children who were taken away, some as young as the age of five, who were kept away from their families until they were 17 and 18 and not allowed to go home sometimes until they had agreed to marry somebody. And think about them. And think about when you are the leaders of this country in the future and you are talking to the Aboriginal leadership about what, what can be done to help their communities become stronger, that you will understand where they're coming from and that you will do what you can to help them to achieve their objectives as well because you are the future. You are those leaders. And I'd like, you to understand, I'd like you to understand this as well. In the public schools of this country, no one was to blame for what was, was being educated, but we need, what we need to change that. Nobody could 
could change that other than you because you are the ones who are going to be involved in the way that schools are going to do things in the future. And when you are in positions of leadership and influence, and even today, we need you to go back and talk to your schools about the fact that you want to understand fully a true history of Aboriginal people in this country. You want to know about what was going on, and you want to make sure that all Aboriginal children of the future are taught properly about who they are, about what they, what they have been, and what they are entitled to be because you're the ones that are going to make that happen. So please, when you have that moment of silence, when you stand silent on that day, think about Aboriginal children. Think about Aboriginal children of the past who suffered. Think about the ones in the future who need your help. Thank you very much.